Hi, my name's Beth Locke. I'm an archivist here at the Vivian G. Harsh Research Collection of Afro-American History and Literature. This repository is located in the Carter G. Woodson Regional Library and houses the largest manuscript collection of African-American history and literature in the Midwest. Today, the archive is partnering with the One Book, One Chicago. This annual library program chooses one book and encourages the entire city to read it at the same time. This year's selection is Exit West, a novel by Mohsin Hamid. The book examines the theme of journeys beyond borders. So today, let's take a closer look at one story of Beyond Borders from the Harsh Research Collection. The Marjorie Stewart Joyner papers were donated to the library in 1992 by Dr. Joyner herself. Marjorie Stewart Joyner was born to a school teacher and his wife in 1896 in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Her family took part in the Great Migration, settling in Chicago in 1912. In 1912, Marjorie Stewart Joyner enrolled in the A.B. Moeller Beauty School. She graduated in 1916, becoming their first black graduate. She went home and did her mother-in-law's hair, and it was a debacle. <laughs> she had learned how to style European hair, but didn't know what to do with textured hair. So she decided to go back to school, and she enrolled in Madam C.J. Walker's Beauty School. Joyner quickly became Walker's protege. Through her partnership with Madam Walker, she advocated for the professionalization of black beauty cultures. In 1928, Marjorie Stewart Joyner um, wrote the first cosmetology laws for the state of Illinois. She went on to patent the permanent waving machine. Here is Joyner's November 1928 U.S. patent for her permanent waving machine, showing her description, the exterior of her invention, its internal workings, and how the machine is used. Marjorie Stewart Joyner went on to professionalize her career. She started uh, the Alpha Chi Pi Omega sorority and fraternity for hair stylists and barbers, uh, which spread nationally. She art also started SOTA, the United Beauty School Owners and Teachers Association. In 1952, Alpha Chi Pi Omega and UPSOTA chose to have their national convention in Miami and Haiti. Here we have instructions for participating travelers, including instructions on what to pack. Here we have a photograph of UPSOTA and Alpha Chi Pi Omega arriving in Haiti, and a photograph of them acting in an unofficial diplomatic capacity. Here we have Marjorie Stewart Joyner laying a wreath at a Haitian monument in 1952. This would be the first of many trips that Marjorie Stewart Joyner and her hair care professionals took. In 1955, Yusota's convention took place in Mexico City. The group was warmly welcomed by local officials. Here we have a photo from the convention with Joyner on the far right, and on the stage behind her, you'll see a, a, a shop demonstration taking place. Um, in 1957, the group went on a tour of Europe. They went to London, Paris, and Rome. Paris was their second stop. We have a photo of them enjoying the local sites. Here's a photo of them taken in front of Notre Dame Cathedral. You'll see Joyner is pictured at the bottom right. Joyner also organized shop demonstrations with Parisian beauty shops for an exchange of professional knowledge. Joyner's group learned the newest French hairstyles while the Parisian stylists learned from the Americans. In 1960, Upsoda and Alpha Chi Pi Omega traveled to both London and Jerusalem. Here we have a photo of the group with John Hay Whitney, U.S. Ambassador to the United Kingdom. Joyner is located to his left. And this is a photo of the group in the Holy Land on a rooftop overlooking Jerusalem. These trips helped African-American beauticians to learn the latest methods and fashions in beauty culture also succeeding in presenting a respectable international example of African-American womanhood. While her philanthropic, educational, and beauty culture business interests took her around the country and around the world, Joyner remained active in Chicago cultural and civic life. Marjorie Stewart Joyner passed away at the age of 95 in December 1994 in the Southside Chicago home she shared with her family for over 60 years. The Marjorie Stewart Joyner papers are just one of over 250 archival collections at the Vivian G. Harsh Research Collection. 
please stop in to view any collection. Our archives are accessible five days a week by appointment only. Appointments help staff maintain social distancing in the manuscript reading room. Or you can view digital collections from the archive on Chicago Public Library's website. Thank you for taking part, and I hope you enjoy this season of One Book, One Chicago.